only a water for kit guru and this gaming pc here is msi aegis ti which looks very similar to the msi aegis x that we saw a little while ago except it is rather more substantial it's a, inside this a medium-sized case. It's a, a micro ATX form factor. It's a desktop Core i7-6700K Skylake and it has dual GTX 1080 uh, desktop graphics cards. Now this is GTA 5 benchmark which we've seen a bazillion times. It's running at 4K with all the eye candy turned up using about 8 uh, or so gigabytes of graphics memory and it'll steam along at 90 odd frames per second and it looks absolutely lovely um, which is what you'd expect. Now this is a fully built PC that's arrived from MSI in the form that I'm using it. Uh, I understand in the USA they actually get a bare bones uh, and they have to put their own graphics cards and processor and such like in it which uh, sounds like a bit of a nightmare actually because uh, it's relatively compact inside the chassis as we will see in a short while. So the basic gist of it is Windows 10 Core i7 6700K uh, that button there allows you to overclock it automatically so it runs at 4 gigahertz turbo into 4.2 out of the box and if you press that button it changes it uh, it starts a, a gaming app and that gets up to 4. Point, a, a shade under 4.6 gigahertz. I have to say the difference between 4.2 and 4.6 on this PC uh, almost nothing. Uh, we've got a pair of uh, NVMe uh, PCI Express SSDs in a RAID and then we've got uh, the only sort of micro form factor component in there is some DDR4 2400MHz which is SODIMS rather than regular desktop memory, 64 gig of it uh, and then GTX 1080s obviously they're MSI GTX 1080s as you expect and then a whole uh, load of uh, inputs and outputs on the front and the rear because uh, it's aimed at the VR market as you might expect and as we can see GTA 5 absolutely just flies along. Um, I have to say the spec of this if you hadn't told me the if you hadn't shown me a photo of the thing just gave me the spec of it on paper it is in many respects very similar to uh, the last uh, MSI Titan laptop that we saw except that it's a desktop processor rather than a mobile processor and obviously when you look at the thing it's desktop graphics cards rather than uh, MXM GPUs but on paper uh, that isn't necessarily apparent the physical size of this you now is a different thing uh, so things like we have uh, killer wireless uh, on the back uh, and also Killer Nick, so that's the latest wireless AC1435 and Killer uh, LAN E2400, for example. Uh, all the usual partners, Nehemic Audio and such like, and therefore we get all the uh, associated software that MSI loves to load up its systems with, which uh, can at a certain point get just a little bit vexing actually. Uh, the first thing I did once uh, I'd done the usual tell Windows where I live or not to tell Windows where I live, uh, which territory at the very least, and then turn off all the uh, talk to uh, the mothership type of software, location stuff. Uh, next thing I did was uninstall Norton because I cannot abide that stuff. But anyway, there we go. Uh, so the form factor of this PC looks very similar to that previous Aegis uh, X, but it isn't laid out the same way. Okay, and that's the benchmark finishing which means that we can clear the monitor away and give you a better look at the main event. Uh, so it looks similar to Aegis X, but is not exactly the same. Aegis X used the uh, plinth to house the power supply, which uh, actually was a problem because they had a tiny little cooling fan at the rear, so 40 mil uh, diameter fan, which shrieked away. Um, but it meant that air could kind of flow through and then out through per ventilations here. This is different. What you've got here is basically uh, a regular tower but on a slope and then you get this kind of um, nod to uh, a, a helmet um, uh, it's armor it's that sort of thing and it means they've used the plinth as kind of uh, extra drive base so if we just pull at this piece of plastic like so it's two screws I've already removed, or they wouldn't know for my fiddling there. And you'll see that we have some drive bays, which are already wired up with uh, SATA and power, so you can simply plug a uh, drive in there. Incidentally, I've left the power on simply so you can observe the uh, MSI Mystic lighting system, which is exactly the same as we've seen a bazillion times before. So obviously you can choose, well, you can choose it off if you like, or you can have it set to pulse or uh, any of those other good things. And let's just pull off the side panel. Two catches secured by two screws. 
that's that one there. Shows you the main event of the graphics card, or one of the two graphics cards. And you can get this one off here. Surprisingly fiddly these side panels for things that are supposed to just kind of lift off and slide back on. And that shows you the radiator which is on the CPU. And then here we have much simpler, uh, more ventilation. There are four fans, two, two, uh, two 120s at the front and two 120s in the top, and they do a superb job of cooling. Also, uh, the 120 mil uh, radiator liquid cooler on the CPU and the way they've uh, internally divided up the system, so the graphics cards up here and the CPU down there are in separate chambers, works very well. The power supply, as you can see from the cable, sits underneath and that's also in its own little housing. So, uh, although it looks I mean, it's, it's not massive, it's a micro ATX system, but uh, it looks like a reasonably large uh, chassis for a compact system. It is actually divided into compartments and that works very well indeed. Temperatures, uh, so the CPU idled at 3600, extreme load 62, uh, and then GPUs idled in the 50s and under extreme load. There's a bit of a differential actually. The one GPU is consistently in the low to mid 70s, the other consistently, actually 83, not the low to mid 80s, 83. Uh, so there's about 10 degrees difference between the two GPUs, but then when you look at the chassis, you can see one GPU is here. Obviously the fans aren't spinning at the minute, it's not under load, and the other one is in the middle. Uh, and there's this plate here with a whole load of screws and such like. Um, when I received uh, the Aegis Ti uh, from MSI, they actually gave me a quick call to say, oh, can you just double check the SLI bridge, um, which you can just see there, uh, because there was a concern that um, some have been sent out with the old flexi bridges rather than the proper hard uh, uh, full bandwidth bridge, which is what that is, that's the correct one. But I have to say that getting those panels off and then popping it up and taking it out and just, oh that's fine, and putting it back, it was all just a little bit more work than I'd expect for uh, a factory built system. Uh, the, the idea of doing a bare bones build into this, oh no. Um, anyway. So it's obviously MS it's MSI hardware throughout. Uh, this is the back of the motherboard, as you can see from the CPU uh, uh, hold down, and then we've got uh, two of the memory dim uh, modules there, and we've got the two SSDs there, uh, which means that more of it is in the middle. Uh, the other two memory are in the middle, which uh, sort of shows you the way this thing's laid out. Um, you actually get a better idea of the kind of the slight fiddle. The, the big bit's no problem whatsoever. The fiddle element, for example, uh, we've got an HDMI output on the front to power your headset. That is the pass-through. So this is the uh, graphics card, HDMI here, and that is the pass-through in the center. So you have to put this flexi cable on, bend it around, plug it in, not difficult, um, a little unsophisticated, shall we say. And particularly when you consider they could have installed the blooming thing at the factory, um, unless you're intending to use HDMI output to your uh, 4K display, in which case, good luck with that. Uh, that port there is the HDMI output on the front. We do uh, have a USB Type-C there, USB 3 and 3.1s throughout, uh, all good stuff. So in terms of the spec of the thing, uh, it's good. Uh, the hardware and such like good Core i7 Core 6700K, pair of DTX 1080 desktop graphics, fabulous games like a dream, figures really good. One wrinkle is that Deus Ex, uh, the scores here stink, uh, 24 frames per second, and that is significantly worse than we've seen with previous Core i7 GTX 1080 combos, which should be about 36 FPS average at 4K. This is on Ultra. Uh, it is quite clear to us this is NVIDIA's latest driver at fault, not MSI, so that graph not good, we're not pointing, not pointing the finger at MSI on that front. All the other gaming scores, excellent. Temperature's really good. Uh, the overclocking function, which is a one button press, wouldn't bother with it personally, it made so little difference, totally pointless. Uh, the fact you have the spare drive bay is fine. Um, the 850 watt power supply, it used about 500 watts under um, 3D Mark type loads, so we've got plenty of margin there, that's all good. Noise levels, really pleasing, happy with that. In fact, we've got to build the thing, really happy with that. Uh, pricing, £3,400 including VAT in the UK, and I have to say, despite the fact I had a hater the other day on YouTube, um, 
the exchange rates in the UK at the minute are highly, highly um, flexible, shall we say. So uh, that price, £3,400, uh, whether it's that uh, in the near future, um, up or down, remains to be seen. It wouldn't take very many percents to be quite a significant amount of extra money there. Now, the thing is, when I spec'd up a similar regular PC in a regular tower, uh, I was getting north of two and a half thousand pounds for this PC, but I was getting south of three thousand pounds. Three thousand four hundred pounds, you're paying quite a lot of money for the styling, and frankly, the styling I could take or leave. It doesn't particularly bring anything to the party, the lights on the front and so on, that's all fine, but we can add lights to a case without any great difficulty. Uh, the fact it cools really well, absolutely fine. But then I would expect if I was to buy a, a PC from one of the decent builders with a pair of GTX 1080s in it and a Core i7, I wouldn't expect it to be particularly toasty because cooling those things, we know what we do with it. Um, and if you really want to go all the way, you cool the thing uh, with a custom loop and it is just mwah. So uh, the form factor, it's got to be one of those love it or hate it jobs. Let's face it, it's not tiny. Oh, incidentally, this uh, metal handle here, which um, they've given it a name it's a carrying handle. It does have some name. Gaming handle, that was it. Um, so you can lug the thing around. It works. It's really solid. It's a perfectly decent thing. Uh, when you're gaming hard, actually, all the exhaust air comes out. That gets really quite warm to the touch. Uh, not a problem, just something to note. Uh, overall, I like the PC, what it can do. Uh, Aegis Ti, it's a good one. Uh, I'm not happy about the money. I'm not won over by the styling. Uh, I'm really pleased not to build a PC myself. I'm so glad it came from the factory like this. Uh, so there we go. If you're after a dual GTX 1080 PC uh, with Core i7 powering it along, why the heck not? It does the business. I'm Leo Wardup for KitGuru. This is a MSI Aegis Ti. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from KitGuru, click to subscribe.